Hello, Paul Tranny here, and I want to take you through some of the top tips and tricks and the shortcuts that you should be doing in Photoshop as a designer. So these are ones you should know, and guaranteed you're going to learn something new as well. So let's do something good today and get started. And uh, I'm just going to start off with this layer. And you may or may not know, of course, you'd use this slider to adjust that opacity. Anytime you see a word that's next to a property, why well, can just scrub on it? That's pretty easy. You probably stumbled upon that. Uh, but better than that is actually just using a number. So if I want to make this 50%, I could just hit 5. Okay. If I want 20%, if I want 75%, combo keys just like that, done and done. You get the idea. Okay, another thing that I see a lot of people doing, again, going over here and then scrolling down to get to, say, subtract, for instance, which I've never used. But typically, people make this long track, and then they pick that particular um, layer mode, like I'm doing now, when in actuality, you can just hold on Shift key, plus and minus, and that way you can just kind of focus on the image. Pin light looks pretty cool, and, uh, you know, make your... You know, pick the layer mode that you want kind of based on what you see. I like lighten, screen, you get the idea. But what's even better than that is you're going to identify some that you really like. Like I like overlay and all those and I can hold down shift option and then O for overlay or shift option M for multiply, S for screen. I really like screen. Let's do H for hard light. That text pops a little more that way. All right, so that looks pretty good. Uh, let's move on because I can easily uh, duplicate this layer uh, by Command J or jumping the layer will duplicate it. See, I'm duplicating it a couple times. I can also just hit this new layer. That will give me that new layer. But in fact, if I want to duplicate a layer, just drag it down. It'll duplicate it. All right, so that works out pretty well. And uh, again, I can just hit the trash can to delete. And these little dialogues that pop up that just are confirmation dialogues say, hey, are you sure you want to delete that layer? Yes, I do. And typically you'll select don't show again. But I want to show you sort of the make it better key, which is going to be your option key or your alt key. Okay. So anytime I use it, it's going to do these sort of overrides in this case. So option key, click. Yeah, just override those dialogues just like that. Okay, pretty easy. All right, let's go beyond that because I still want to use the option key. Check this out. I'm going to jump into curves for this image, okay? And you'll be in one of these dialogues and you'll like mess with stuff. You're like, oh, I totally jacked it up. And you're like, oh, I kind of want to reset it back to the way it was. And a lot of people will cancel out and then they'll go back in to this curves dialogue, uh, you know, and, and you don't need to do that because I hold down the option key. It changes any cancel button to a reset button. So bam. And I can work on this. In fact, another pro tip is working on the actual image by selecting this button right here. So this medium tone, I want to make it brighter. I'm working on the image. I don't have to worry about this histogram. What if I want this dark jacket to be even darker, any of those dark tones, something like that with more contrast. Working on the image, clicking OK, and moving along, which is great. All right. So uh, next up, let's uh, focus on painting. So chances are you're going to be doing some, some painting or at least dodging and burning. So you might use your brush tool as well in cases. And uh, let me just change this. But essentially, you know, I can change the size and hardness up here. Nobody does that because you should be using your bracket keys as I hit, uh, you know, the close the open and then the close brackets I'm changing the size okay so we can see they change the size yep change the size the hardness hold down the shift key now it's gonna have a hard edge just like that uh, the uh, open bracket is gonna make it soft you get the idea but I don't like how I can't visualize it like uh, especially for that fall off for the feather uh, and I want to show you that you can just hold down the control and option key and then if you click Oh, that's the size, okay? Maybe I want to make it larger, and I'm just dragging this to the left and right, okay? Uh, I want to make the edge softer, I can do that, or harder, but I get this physical representation or visual representation of it, uh, you know, to get me exactly what I want as I work on this image. Now, now that I have the brush I want, I'm sure I want to paint, but check this out. Um, Let's uh, say, for instance, I decide that I want to make this image set it to overlay. So I'll do Shift Option O, and you're like, wait, nothing happened. 
And that's because anytime you have an options bar with opacity or any layer mode, it's going to override your layers panel. So just a little, little warning there. You can see that it changed that to overlay. If I hit five, it does 50%. But, you know, again, I can just kind of do my do a little bit of touch up or whatever I need to do there uh, in that case. OK, uh, so keep that in mind. And again, I can continue to work on this, you know, as my design. Uh, let's go beyond the standard uh, shortcuts. And we all know that we can create our own keyboard shortcuts. So, sure, there's plenty in here. Uh, plenty we can reference. I'm just going to do two of them really fast because you should actually really be using these. But right in here for, say, tile. Actually, I want to do two things. For tile, I'll do Control Option Command to tile all my images. And then I want to consolidate all to tabs. R might be another one. Match all. Control Option E. But let's go beyond that because in tools, I don't know if you notice right down here, you actually have the ability to set the foreground and the background color. So I'm in tools, I'll scroll down. All of those tools, there it is. Here's my default colors. Foreground color picker is usually what I'd want to use. I'll do, I just want to show you that there's two keys that actually aren't taken. So N isn't taken and K isn't taken. So I could use those for the foreground and the background color. Click OK. Of course, we know what's going to happen. N brings that up. K brings up the background color. You get the idea. OK, so let's move on because what I can also do is I have the ability to I have the ability to actually edit the toolbar on the side as well. So this is huge. Jumping in here, edit toolbar. Here's my toolbar. And as you get more proficient in Photoshop, you don't, you don't need the zoom tool because you know it's uh, shift plus minus. So let's just move that over. Uh, what about the hand tool? Well, that's the space bar. Rotate is R. You get the idea. Start moving that content over. I can move others over if I want to, or individuals, by the way. If you really wanted to mess with somebody, you can like eliminate some of the major tools and then mess with them. And once they ask where they are, just say, ask them if they've, you know, updated their Creative Cloud membership. But nonetheless, I like manipulating and just really customizing this the way I want it to be customized. And I can even not show that option. But typically, I'll turn that on in case I do need to get to these tools for whatever reason. Click done, and you can see it's customized it. And then I have those additional tools right in there. So pretty handy. And I can continue from there. So those are just some quick tips for navigating and working with Photoshop from a designer's perspective.